Hey, what's up, guys? All right, so we're still waiting on this week's chapter of Black Clover to be released. But for today's video, I kind of just want to talk about more or really just elaborate more on the theory that I've been bringing up a lot in my more recent reviews. And that's basically the theory of like what characters or what human characters are going to be able to save the people who were turned into elves and turn them back into normal people. And we've already seen, it's already been heavily hinted that this actually can happen as if a character, if two characters, like say character A, who's been turned to an elf, has a strong enough connection or actually cares enough about character B, that that connection or them caring about them could actually drive the human in them to retake their body from the elf. In fact, it's actually not only been hinted at, it's actually been shown two times in the series. The first time with Fauna and Mars back earlier on in the series during that whole witch arc. And more recently with Yuno and Asta. Now, I mean, with those cases, it's kind of more rare, simply because of the fact that, alright, Fauna, she wasn't officially an elf, she was only a third eye at that point, she wasn't fully reincarnated. And with Yuno, even though he actually was fully reincarnated as an elf, the elf inside of him actually wasn't fully aware of itself, so he was actually, it was a lot easier for him to basically retake control of his body. So, yeah, I mean, those are two examples of, that we have of people being able to retake their bodies, or the connection between two characters being strong enough to have the human retake control of their body. But at the same time, those are kind of outliers in the whole situation. We, but even putting those two examples aside, like I said, it's already been heavily hinted throughout the series that a connection between two characters could help for the character being possessed by an elf to fight for control back of their body. Like, we already saw a few examples of it. We saw Klaus when he was confronting Yuno and Asta. He was starting to fight back a little bit. We saw with Magda and Luck. Luck was actually trying to fight back, even made managed to make himself cry out of one eye. So yeah, there's plenty of examples of characters who are being possessed by elves. After they confront a character they actually have, you know, a connection with, they start to fight back a little bit. So because of that, I'm just going to go ahead with my theory and just basically do a rundown on all the characters who have been turned into elves up to this point that we know of. And basically what characters I believe are actually going to be the ones to actually try to help them fight back and regain control of their bodies. Now, there is one character who has officially been confirmed to have been turned into an elf, but we've actually not seen that character as an elf yet in the manga. So, if you actually want to keep the identity of that character a secret for yourself and wait until the manga reveals it, look down in the description below. I'm going to have time slots of exactly when I'm talking about that character and when I stop talking about that character, so you can actually avoid the spoilers for yourself. That again, like I said, if you want to keep that character a secret to yourself, look down in the description. I'm going to have time slots of exactly when I start and stop talking about the character in the video. So, like I said, just, you know in case you don't want to be spoiled for it. Also, I'm not going to bother mention fodder characters like these three right here on the screen, simply because of the fact that while we do know who these characters are, we don't really know that much about them or any characters they have a connection with, so we can just already assume that if anyone's going to turn them back into humans, it's going to be Asta with his new sword. Okay, so let's start off by listing off all the characters, or at least all the characters we actually care about, who have been officially confirmed to be elves up until this point. Okay, so there's Luck, Real, Klaus, then there's Gouch, his sister Marie, and then there's a mystery character who I mentioned earlier on in the video. Now, like I said, look down in the description below and then I'm telling you exactly when I talk about this character and when I stop talking about this character. So if you don't want to spoil for yourself until the manga actually brings it up, then don't watch this part of the video. Okay, so yeah, the last character I'm actually going to talk about who has officially been confirmed to be an elf, but we haven't seen that yet in the manga, is actually Charlotte the Head of the Blue Rogues. Now, it actually kind of sucks that we found out that she actually is an elf outside the manga because we actually find, we actually get this information from the official Black Clover guidebook. They get her along with another character who we haven't seen return to an elf yet, but based on his past history, we actually can see him being an elf at this point. I'm not going to mention who that character is because you probably don't want to be spoiled for it, but like I said, it actually kind of sucks that we actually haven't found out in the manga that she was an elf before we actually got it revealed in the guidebook. Simply because of the fact that that's a huge spoiler, and as soon as this guidebook came out, the wiki page for this character actually updated the fact that she actually is an elf. And they didn't even bother to wait, or actually even put like a spoiler warning before it. Because a lot of a lot of people who actually just read the manga, who don't bother looking up any information, who don't, you know, go out about the guidebooks, they don't know about the fact that, yeah, Charlotte actually was turned to an elf. So if, you, if they go look at her wiki page for some reason, they just, you know, want to read up on the character a little bit more for some other reason. They'll be spoiled by the fact that she is an elf, and they'll be, you know, that just basically just takes away all the surprise from when it's actually revealed in the manga. But yeah, that's all the characters who have been turned to elves that I'm actually going to talk about in this video. So I'm just going to go through one by one exactly, talk about each character and who I actually think is going to be the one responsible for turning them back into a human and how that process is going to go. Alright, so let's start off with Luck. Luck, I still believe in my heart of hearts, I still believe deep down that Luck can be saved by Magna. That the, strong, that the connection that the two of them have is strong enough as best friends and as rivals that Magna can actually reach out to Luck and get him to fight back for full control of his body. Like we already saw kind of hints of it in the latest chapter where Magna was actually trying to reach out to Luck through the elf that was actually controlling his body. And Luck was actually able to fight back a little bit of control and able to actually cry out of one eye. Now, there is a kind of a caveat to this. There is kind of a caveat to this theory that I have when it comes to Magna saving Luck. And it's the fact that, alright, 
in order for Magna to actually save Luck and to get him to fight for full control of his body, I think Magna either has to die or Luck has to see him take a fatal wound that should kill him. And I'm basing this theory solely off of what we know about Luck's backstory. Because, alright, what we know about Luck before he joined the Black Bulls and before he actually kind of opened, up to, opened himself up to other characters in the Black Bulls, he was kind of closed off and the only character he actually really seemed to care about was his mom. His mom was the only person he actually seemed to have any affection for beforehand. Now, him and his mom had kind of fucked up a relationship where she was kind of abusive to him in the beginning and kind of seemingly only cared about him once he started actually kind of making a name for himself by beating other royals and showing that he actually, he's actually powerful as a mage. But regardless of the fact that, you know, their relationship was kind of fucked up, she was really the only person he had any kind of connection with. And her death really affected him to the point where he really closed off his heart to other people and slowly led the fight. Now, after that mission with Asa and Noel, where he actually reopened his heart up to other people, he slowly started to gain connection with everyone else. And the person who he gained a stronger connection with than anyone is Magna. The two of them have become, like I said, best friends and rivals. I believe the shock of that would actually remind him heavily of his mom's death and shake him loose enough from the elf's control in order for him to fight for full control back of his body and actually succeed in doing it this time. Okay, so next up is Klaus, and I actually do think that Asta will be heavily involved in helping Klaus take full control back of his body. Now, here's the kind of thing, though. It's kind of a toss-up. Either A, Asta's actually going to be involved, and as he's going to use his new sword to break the spell on Klaus and turn him back into a normal person. Or, it's going to be Asta, Yuno, and Mimosa. The three of them with the strongest connection to Klaus that we've seen in the series, working together to, in order to gain Klaus full control back of his body. Now, I can actually go either way when it comes to Klaus. It could either just be Asta using a sword or the three of them, like I said, working together to, you know, use their connection to Klaus to basically have him fight back to his body. I don't really care either way. I like Klaus, but he's not one of my fan favorite characters. So, regardless of how they try to bring him back, I'm, I'm cool with it. Okay, so next up is Real, the captain of the Zordir. And really, the only person I can really think of, and it's kind of obvious who it is, but the only person I can even somewhat believe would actually be capable of helping him gain full control of his body back through their connection would be his butler, Walter. And that's only because of the fact that, as we saw during the flashback of the, during the Royal Knights tournament, the only person who's actually ever shown any affection towards him or actually actually seemed to care at all about Real when he was a child and he was growing up was his butler, Walter. Because we saw in the flashback, his parents didn't really give a shit about him because he was too dangerous and too wild. His, he never really had any friends growing up. In fact, I believe Asta actually was his first friend that he made his, in, in his entire life. So yeah, given the fact that Walter was the only person to actually show any type of affection or actually care about real for a majority of his life, it has. there's no doubt in my mind that it has to be him that actually is going to be the one to save real from be, being controlled by an elf. Now, it comes to the question of is it going to be like their connection just that deep that as soon as real sees him or actually talks to him a little bit, Walter will be able to actually, you know, get real to fight for control back of his body. Or we'll actually take something like what I said with Magna, where we'll take Walter taking heavy damage and possibly dying in front of real for him to basically fight for that control of his body. Okay, so next up is Marie. And there's actually a theory going around that she actually wasn't possessed by an elf. Instead, she was actually possessed by uh, Lich's original wife, Tetya. Now, if that series is correct, then we don't actually really have to worry about her fighting for control back of her body. Tetsuo will probably willingly give it up to her. Or the two of them will kind of be kind of like how William and uh, Patrick were doing it, where they, the two of them were switching back and forth between control and not control. Now, if she actually is being controlled by an elf and actually not being possessed by Tetsuo, then I would have to say the only person I can actually really see her having a strong enough connection to to break into control of the elf would actually be Sister Teresa. Either that... Or the kids inside the orphanage who are, you know, who have been her long life friends. Or even Asta. Even Asta just showing up because she does have a deep connection or has a, a deep affection to Asta. So either him showing up or him using a sword. One of those three options would actually have to be the one if she actually is controlled by an elf. Like I said, I still believe that she actually is a reincarnation of Tetia. And that the two of them will have kind of like a William Vengeance and a Patry kind of connection where the two of them will switch back and forth with control. But uh, yeah, that's my theory for her. All right, and now we're on to Gouch, and I had to go over Maria first simply because of the fact that she is the key. She is the key to basically reawaken Gouch to control his body. Because, yeah, Gouch is kind of, you know, he's gotten more familiar with the people in the Black in, uh, the black Bulls. He's actually kind of become more friendly with everyone else. But still, up until this point, the only person he has a, even a real deep connection with, the only person who has a connection strong enough with in order for him to actually take back control of his body would be Sister Marie. So it actually would take her showing up in order for him to fight for control back of his body from the elf. 
Because, I mean, we have a whole arc basically dedicated to showing exactly how much he loves his sister and that he's basically willing to do anything and fight anyone in order to protect her. So, I mean, if we see happen, if we have to see a situation where, you know, Marie be in full control of her body, goes up to him and tries to basically tell him to, you know, to wake up and try to reconnect with Gouch, the elf inside of him will probably attack Marie and then, you know, Gouch, he's not going to stand for that. He will instantly overtake his the elf inside of him and retake his body from that situation. And honestly, if we actually see Asta jump in after to use his second sword or his new sword in order to break the spell on Gouch, I'm going to be disappointed because out of every character, this is the character that we should see, you know, the whole him being strong enough or the connection between two characters being strong enough to break the will of the elf. That should be the character. This should be the character we actually see firsthand example of that. Okay, and finally, we're on to Charlotte, and we've only really seen Charlotte have a connection with three characters throughout the entire series, and that is Yami, Soul, and Mario Leona. Now, Mario Leona, I don't think the connection between the two of them is that strong. I mean, they're friendly. We saw during that hot that uh, hot tub scene or that uh, spring bath scene that the two of them have somewhat of a friendly connection. But I don't think it's strong enough for Mario, Mario Leona to be the caveat for Charlotte to fully gain control back of her body. So she's out. Uh, when it comes to Soul, we know the two of them actually do have a strong connection but simply because of the fact that the two of them are in the same uh, magic order. And the fact that we pretty much always see the two of them together. Whenever we see Soul, we always see Charlotte. Whenever we see Charlotte, we most likely will see Soul right behind her because the two of them do have a strong connection. Now, even though I do think the two of them have a strong connection, I don't think Soul would be the caveat for Charlotte to fully take back control of her body. But instead, I do think it actually would be the caveat for her to start to take back control. I think the connection between the two of them would be strong enough for her to basically... Something like how with uh, Magna and Luck, where Magna's connection to Luck was actually strong enough to get Luck to kind of take back control of his body by crying out one eye. I think we'll see hints of Charlotte taking back control of her body when she confronts uh, Soul and Soul tries to connect with her instead of the elf inside of her. So yeah, that leaves Yami, and I actually do think Yami is the most likely person to actually get Charlotte to take full control back of her body. And that's simply because of the fact that, all right, even though we don't know exactly how much Yami actually does care about Charlotte or actually how connected to her he actually is, we do know that Charlotte on her side, she's fully head over the heels in love with Yami. She has been in love with him since the fact that he saved her from her curse all those years ago. So she's been in love with him ever since that first meeting that the two of them had. So yeah, simply because of the fact that there's no stronger connection than love and she is fully, like I said, head over heels in love with Yami. I think just by seeing him or even talking to him would get her to basically take back control of her body from the elf. And that actually probably would be the scene where we actually find out or she reveals finally that, yeah, she's in love with Yami. I mean, like, it's a pretty good romantic setup right there for the series, which does not heavily at all focus on romance. Despite the fact that every time we see Noelle near Asta, it's pretty much just a love comedy right there. But, uh, yeah, that's pretty much who I think would actually be able to get Charlotte to take control back of her body. But yeah, guys, that's pretty much it for the video. Let me know in the comment section down below if you think my theories hit the mark or if you think I'm just completely wrong. I, I would like to hear I like to hear your opinions. Let me know in the comment section down below what your thoughts and theories are. But uh, yeah, that's it for the video. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Look forward to the next review of Black Clover, and uh, I'll catch you guys later. Peace.